Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So today we have a list that was sent over to me. They said that one of the top players that they know of this season is running this deck pretty frequently and that it does really well. Now, initially looking at this list, it does have some of your stronger cards. It has your Hawk, your Rock Slide, which by itself is really strong. It has Shuri and Wong. And so this is a very pay to win deck. This has a lot of flexibility. You can lock the opponent out with your Goose. You could copy that Goose's ability with your Mystique. You could drop Zabu. You could copy Zabu's ability with your Mystique. Or you could hold it to copy onto your Hawk or your Wong. But it has a lot of flexibility, a lot of ways to disrupt the opponent and just drop a strong amount of power. And you don't necessarily need your own reveal cards. And so if the opponent is running a counter Cosmo, it's not always as impactful as it could have been otherwise. And then it does have Chavez in the list as the last card. That way you can more consistently guarantee that you're going to draw into your Zabu and your other four cost cards, because this does lean very heavily on Zabu and how broken he can be. And even if you just get one or two turns off with Zabu, that is enough. Even if they end up roguing it or enchantressing it, one or two turns is often enough to be able to get your own upside. And if you hide Zabu behind Goose, unless they have one of their own, they're not gonna be able to Enchantress it. Now they could rogue it, but that is a risk that we're gonna take. And let's go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, first up we have Melon and we do have our Zabu. We have our Moon Girl and our Rock Slide. So we'll at least be able to send them quite a bit of disruption. Um, by turn five, we could drop two Rock Slides if we want to. We're gonna send them a little disruption on turn two with our, with our Black Widow. And now we get Shuri as well. Oh my gosh, this is looking stacked. And so we have the Black Widow. We'll send them the Widow's Bite. They're not going to be able to draw this next turn. And then we'll drop Zabu. And then we just kind of explode from there. We might end up going with uh, Moon Girl next turn. Maybe we do one of our cards and Moon Girl. Maybe we throw Hawk and Moon Girl. Wow, they throw Wave onto the board. Uh, very interesting. This could very likely be a Galactus deck then. And so if it's a Galactus deck... Can't we just hard counter it with a goose, I think? If it's a Galactus deck, I think we do a Shuri into a Rock Slide. Either that or we just go goose so that they could only play, what, their death? Um, but only three cards are going to be discarded, and so that brings him down to, what, seven? I think we're confident in the goose play. So from nine, it'd bring him down to six. Goose is going to stop them from dropping, I think, just about anything else onto the board. Do we snap into that? I, I snapped too late, but I snapped a little bit too late. I, I thought about it a little bit too long, but I think the Goose is the perfect counter to this Galactus play. Uh, typically, most decks are going to fold to Galactus, but I think we countered it pretty heavily here. They won't be able to do a Spider-Man to lock this lane down. They won't be able to really drop much power at all. So they have four cards left in their deck. If we do a Hawk, it's only going to be seven power because we didn't have anything that fed into it. Um, but I think seven power might be enough to push it for us. We're going to go ahead and skip on five and then see what they play. They do a fast. Interesting. What else could they be running? Um, that gives them three extra power. So it could be at most, what, 12? We can do our Hawk and that's going to be seven. So unless they have any kind of owner reveals that affect us that are below a four cost, then we should at least force a tie in this scenario. Let's go ahead and see what they play. Hawk is going to push us up to 12. Mystique, and then, oh my god, the Silver Surfer in a Galactus deck? What? I am so confused. And so is it just a strong Silver Surfer deck that also has Galactus? Oh my gosh, I'm interested to see what other play lines this deck has, because that's pretty unique. With that tie, let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Ragai, the hype man himself. And the first location is Atlantis. We're going to go ahead and throw our Korg over there. That will allow us to make sure we have Tempo going into this next turn. Not that we necessarily need Tempo this early, um, but it does give us a decent push into that Tempo. Sokovia forces us to drop ooh, our, our Rock Slide, which is a big resource for us. We're going to go ahead and throw Black Widow that we got lucky and we top decked. Um, we do have Zabu. We'll be able to do that into a Hawk. But with that discard, it takes away a good chunk of our resource. So we can do Zabu now. And then we do have both Hawk and Mystique. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to force more junk into their deck. 
So we're really going to want to look for like a Shuri. Um, I, I mean, we have the Hawk into Mystique. We would really like a little bit more. And so it does look like we're running another against another Galactus deck, right? Which is strange um, that we're seeing so many Galacti. Galactuses? But the problem this time around is the lane that they will likely Galactus into is Jotunheim, and we don't have our Zabu over there. I'm going to go ahead and throw Hawk over into Jotunheim. Um, we can do Goose next turn. We could do both Mystique and Goose next turn. No, they do a Doc Ock. Oh, that feels even worse, I think. Um, at least Mystique will copy Hawk's ability, and they won't be able to do anything big into the Jotunheim lane, but we're going to lose power every single turn. And then that coupled with the fact that both of those cards are going to start losing power as more cards are drawn and that we discarded our rock slide from Sokovia uh, just looking very, very bleak. We're going to go ahead and throw our Shuri onto the board. I think we can still outpower them in Jotunheim even after they even after we lose six more power, 10 more power total. Oh, and so then they go with a big hobgoblin in Sokovia, uh, which does block off our Sokovia lane. And then now we have the double power Chavez that we can throw onto the board. It really comes down to where they play here. If they have a one, two, or three cost card that they can play into Jotunheim, maybe they can beat us. Um, otherwise, I think we outpace in the Atlantis lane here. And definitely not an ideal sh showing or showcasing of the list. Um, with us losing Rock Slide, that takes away a lot of our disruption, a lot of our power push. But we still have that flexibility in the strong other cards. So Shuri is just a strong card and creates some incredible next turn value as well. And we do get the retreat. All right, next up we have Cross Fate. And again, we have our Zabu in our starting hand. I think it goes understated how much having Chavez in the list helps with the consistency of having that one particular card pool. It increases it by turn three by, I think it was something like 6%, which is pretty substantial. 6% more often you're gonna have that card play on turn three, which could be your biggest power push and your biggest win condition. And on those games that you don't, you can more easily retreat. And if you win every time you have it, then that is a substantial amount more consistent than anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and throw our Zabu into the sewer system. We did use Black Widow on them. And then now we have four four cost cards that we're going to be able to utilize to either reload our hand, which I think this next turn we probably go with a Moon Girl. That way we can have a, a Wong and a Wong. Let's do Goose and Moon Girl here. The Goose is going to help us somewhat protect our Zabu lane. It also makes it a little bit easier for us to win that location. Uh, because it makes it harder for them to push that power. They are going to pull one of our highest cost cards, so either Hawk, Wong, or White Queen, and then next turn we'll be able to do the same. But we have two Hawks to use against them. We have two Wongs that we can throw onto the board all on that last turn if we wanted to, to force a lot of rocks into their hand. And this is the point where I always have a conundrum. We, I think we have this one locked down by such a large margin I really want to snap here. Okay, so they snapped instead, solving our solving our issue. Now, do we go for the mid roll or the high roll? Uh, two Wongs plus a rock slide would be eight rocks in the deck. The mid roll would be four instead. I'm going to play two cards into the Fisk Tower lane because I want to avoid a potential arrow play here. If they use arrow and try to yank our cards over into Fisk Tower, we want to avoid that and avoid them getting destroyed. So we did luckily dodge that potential painful play line by stacking our cards into Fisk Tower last turn. And so now if they do a leader, that should be fine. They won't be able to do the leader here. First, we're going to do our Wong and then our Rock Slide and then our Hawk. Now, if we think they're running leader, do they get as much upside out of this interaction as we do? Depending on where they drop leader, maybe. This would copy both of these cards, so that would send four rocks into our deck. And it would cap out this lane for them. That one's tough. I think instead of pushing for winning sewer system, we're going to push to win the Atlantis lane instead. The reason being, they will copy just the Wong in sewer system. I anticipate maybe a leader play here. Now, if they go with a Magneto here, they might still be able to get us, but it's splitting hairs at that point. It really depends on what they're playing. I think the leader will come in in mid. No, they play two cards. They play their own Hawk, which is fine. Why well, I think they stole the Hawk from us, which is fine. We have the Wong into the double trigger of Rock Slide, so our Hawk becomes bigger. Uh, we have <laughs> we have the bigger Hawk in the Hawk contest, 
and then we have the 22 power come down in atlantis this doesn't even feel like i should win some of these games but it just works incredibly well out of all of the games that i've played with this list most of them have been able to go that full distance to the very end game and i've been able to get a lot of wins a really large percentage of wins which doesn't feel fair by any means it is incredibly fun so if you do have these cards if you happen to have both shuri and hawk this deck is phenomenal and it utilizes it very very well all right next up we have our old nemesis elliot and their title is old nemesis i don't know that you guys saw that and it's cut off from the top of the screen but that is why i called him my our old nemesis so we do have dark dimension here we also have zabu in our opening hand which is phenomenal um this deck definitely leans heavily onto zabu and if you have to retreat when you don't have it it's not great but it is okay um we're gonna go ahead and play black widow that will offer a little bit of disruption we are going to ooh, they draw one of our cards and so maybe they draw a chavez for us and we don't have to draw it anymore um so we will have zabu to play after this turn and then we can start flooding some of the power onto the board we could actually next turn do we just really heavily lean in and go something like mystique to copy zabu that's going to make these one cost and we could really lean in on the moon girl and just flood so much junk on the last turn uh, and maybe we go with something like a white queen and a cable to get some of their resources uh, we get some insight onto what their strongest card play is we do draw into our hawk though so i like the idea of having the raw power from our rock slide next turn we could hide mystique behind the dark dimension making sure that hawk is the last card that we drop in the game so that he reveals first after the dark dimension and we'll get some insight into what kind of deck they're running with the white queen here so they do run a falcon they pick up their one cost card which is only one but it leaves some extra space for the angela uh the goose it looks like is what they stole from our cable which is fine everything that we can play now except for chavez is going to fit into that location so they do have an iron man we draw into our shuri let's hide the mystique behind the dark dimension we're going to play shuri into the daily bugle and that will allow us to push uh, our really big strong play somewhere depending on on where we need to and the big strong play that i'm talking about is probably going to be moon girl uh moon girl to get doubled which is eight which is a good resource and then we have the hawk that comes down last so they have 18 power here in their deck they have six cards so i think we go with the eight power moon girl into the eternity range we go with hawk as the last card that's in the daily bugle location and then we go with cable in the we're gonna go ahead and reorder that though just in case they pull our cards over uh we want to make sure that hawk was the physical last card that we played regardless of if this is going to get revealed first or not and so i think we absolutely have this they snapped i'm not going to snap back we're not we're not actively trying to climb i really want to see this one resolve and a lot of times we can push a surprising amount of power but maybe they have something that we're not anticipating maybe they have a really strong play they can copy the iron man with the mystique over here i don't think that's going to be enough for them though so they do play two cards into the dark dimension lane we have the eight power moon girl we have the massive hawk in the daily bugle lane they do use a mantis which reloads their devil dino a little bit further but we i think outpower that here as well which is kind of nuts we really shouldn't but we do oh we almost <laughs> i forgot about cable pulling cards from their deck which would reduce the power of both hawks that we have we almost messed up we caused ourselves to lose the dark dimension with the cable play but we almost lost the daily bugle lane as well just a little bit more and they would have had it but we were able to find our win let's go ahead and jump over into the next one all right so next up we have frozen fires the first location is the negative zone and with this list if we have a good outlook then oh oh ego is going to mess this up massively kind of love it we're gonna snap into it we're gonna snap into it we have the goose play line we have the zabu and then it is all in ego's hands we are going to take our hands off the wheel and we will let ego go let go of our ego you did it again my friend you did it again all right next up we have god el malin and the first location is xandar we do have some of our stacked uh four cost cards district x comes down and just ruins our whole life 
Uh, if we had Zabu already, this would be fine. Uh, we have all the resources we need to be successful. Without having Zabu, and without having a chance to draw onto Zabu, we are uh, not looking pretty. It is not looking good. The only upside we get out of District X is that we already have, have Hawk, and so they're going to have a few more cards left in their deck at the end of the game compared to what they would have otherwise. And so let's go ahead and let's throw our Sunspot onto the board. He's going to get plenty of action here, just absorbing some energy, just sitting there and hanging out, having a good time. Next turn, we could drop one of our four cost resources. I would like to be able to do a Moon Girl to get two Hawks onto the board, but I don't think there's going to be any way. With us top decking Warpath, we're just not going to have enough space before we can play our cards out. And so they do use a Maximus. We draw into two more resources, which means that we are absolutely not going to be able to use our Moon Girl here. So we could use Rock Slide uh, really wherever. I think we're going to put it into District X. That's going to reload their, their deck with two rocks. Wow, they had a Shuri already in their hand, uh, which is big. Uh, we just hope it's not great. Oh, we get a Shuri as well. And then we draw into our Red Skull, which is a typical Shuri play line. But I think we've already invested too much time and resources into this play line. Now, they're going to have seven cards in their deck at the end of the game. And so that will be a 15 power Hawk plus the one. So that's 16 power here. We have Claw we could use. We have uh, Warpath we could use right now, which is going to be a nine power resource. We're going to stick it out at least for now. They have the massive vision. They have some really good vision. So I think they move their vision. We're going to gamble a little bit here. I think they move their vision to try to compete for maybe Xandar. We're going to push a tiny bit of power into Machine World with Claw and hope that we can steal these two lanes away. Maybe they move their vision over and we just compete for these two locations instead. I don't know. It's not a phenomenal last turn play. We could have went with Red Skull into uh, Machine World instead, but we didn't, unfortunately. Wow. So they use an arrow to pull our cards over. Um, and it's going to be the Claw, which gives us another 5 power, which gives us the win in Xandar by 1. And our Sunspot absorbs some energy in District X, and so we win that one by 1 as well. Should we have won that one? No, absolutely not. And so with that one, we are going to go ahead and end the video here. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a comment down below. And as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.